This is Stay Paid, a sales and marketing podcast on a mission to help you close more deals and retain more business. Welcome to another Silver Dollar episode of Stay Paid. I'm Joshua Stike. And I'm Luke Acri. And today, Luke, we are going to get a little sciencey. Yeah, this is going to be the best episode yeah. you have heard yeah. in 2022. Bill Nye, the science guy. <laughs> I remember Bill Nye. Or did you, did you ever watch the Magic School Bus? Yeah. Oh, heck yeah. yeah. Magic School Bus. That yeah. was wild. Oh, well, the magic school bus would like go inside like like the, yeah, the, human, body the human body right. or space. That's what we're going to do like today. Go inside the human body. Uh, we're going to go right. inside the human body. Buckle the, up. Uh, the intro song to the magic school bus. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Into, <laughs> into the brain. So we're going to get like, into some neuroscience. I listening to yeah, right. Exactly. Guys, it's how to get better at anything. <laughs> Stay paid the science aid. Yeah. How about that? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> That'll be our new episode series. I love Just it. For this one. Just for this episode series. alone. <laughs> so anyway, I read this book recently by Daniel Coyle called The Talent Code. Okay. And I was telling you about it a couple of weeks ago because yep. it's like, I just got so into it from the standpoint of, you know, when you think about talent or you think about doing anything well or getting better at something, there's been this long sort of standing uh, idea that like nature versus nurture, right? You're either sure. born with a talent or you were raised in an environment that fostered that talent. And of course, we all know that you get better uh, at things by practicing. So if you're raised in an environment where something, where a particular sport's really popular or your family, you know, is really into something, you're naturally going to be doing something more uh, to get better at it. But what was so cool was when broken down from a neurological standpoint, the ability to get better is actually controlled by this thing called myelin, right? And so yes. you may have heard of this. You may back, remember back to your high school science or biology classes we're talking about myelin because we've known about this stuff since the 1700s. But it was only recently, you know, we're talking maybe, uh, what, well, 24? 14, how many years ago? How many I don't years know. Was that six years ago? No, Seven, eight years ago. Eight, yeah, eight, eight years ago that they figured out that what myelin actually is, is they used to think of it as, uh, as an insulation uh, on these things called axons, right? These wires in your brain that carry uh, electrons and neurons from like point to point. So whenever, like anytime you do something, I'm not reading, I have so many notes on this, but I'm not reading it. I'm just recalling it all. So if I screw anything up, I You're apologize. using your myelin. <laughs> anytime you do something, <laughs> Your, your, uh, the synapses in your brain fire off where, where you hit this action threshold. Once you've hit the action threshold, the electrons fire down these axons to the other points in your brain that actually control your movement. So whether you talk, whether you have a thought, whether you do anything, that's what's happening in hmm. milliseconds, microseconds, whatever. The stuff that coats those wires is called myelin. They used to think it's just like a, a coating, you know, protective coating. It actually, the more myelin that you build, the faster and the easier the pathway between electron to electron so the Crazy. better that you get you get at things and so the whole book all that's very interesting from a neurological standpoint but the whole book talks about like how do you actually build more myelin in order to get better and this can apply i want to make sure we're not talking about sports necessarily obviously that's part of it this can apply to your job this can apply to your sales this can apply to any activity in your business that you want to get better at so the first thing that they talk about there's three things we'll go over one is deep practice the second one is uh, an ignition point so you have to have something that actually ignites your desire to achieve something and then the third one is coaching but as it relates to deep practice the use of deep practice actually increases the myelin around your neural pathways you do this through repetition, making mistakes, and then fixing those mistakes. Yeah, it's so, it's <clears throat> it's crazy to think about it from a neurological perspective, because obviously everybody knows you got to practice to yeah, get better, yeah. and we've said it before. Practice makes but perfect. But to think we'll about it from it. a neurological standpoint of like, you're building the myelin yeah. in your brain. But the idea of deep practice, what I always point out for people is like the 10,000 hours to master something. Yep. And you, I mean, think about how long that is. I always give the point, like most people barely practice at all. Think about your listening presentation or your sales presentation. If you're going to sell somebody insurance and, and that whole thing, how many times have you practiced that? Are you practicing that every single day? If you just practice 30 minutes a day, which is more than what you're doing right now, you're only a couple hundred hours or really like 150, 160 hours in a year. It will take you years to really master just that presentation. And this is why when you study the greats, the, the Tiger Woods, the Kobe Bryants, the Tom Brady's, you look at a life that people would really call obsession. Yeah. Like Grant Cardone wrote a book called Be Obsessed or Be Average. Yeah. And the whole premise of the book was, if you don't obsess over this thing, 
to build Mylan, now he probably didn't know about the Mylan, <laughs> but to build Mylan, you will not win. You will not be the best at it. Yeah, absolutely. So the idea of repetition, like you said, making mistakes is a huge part of growth. Like you will not get better at something if you don't make the mistake, right? Because the actual process of creating and generating more Mylan comes from messing up, going back and fixing it, Crazy. and doing it right. So like this whole idea, like, I love this stuff because you hear all the cliche things like I, you know, learn from your mistakes or um, <laughs> failure makes you better. And you like you hear those like sayings. It's on not Instagram. a failure, Josh. It's an opportunity. It's an opportunity. <laughs> and you look at it and you go, yeah, that's all nice, but ah, I don't want to fail. Yeah. It actually turns it into, no, 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 you have to fail. You want to fail. In order to get better. And go ahead. I was going to say great example of this, which I'm struggling with. So Evelyn turns one today. Happy birthday, oh, happy Evelyn. Birthday, yeah, it's Evelyn. hard to believe that she's wow. one years old. But I'm watching her do things, whether it's trying to walk and fall down, opening a book and yeah. trying to get her thumbs to do it. And I'm just like, I just want to keep helping her. Yeah. her. yeah, and helping her. And I just go, no, no, no. You, you got to let her just fall down. You yeah. got, And you know that instinctually for kids. Yep. Like, you know, no, no, you, she's got to learn how to get her thumbs together to open up a page. Like, she's got to learn how to do that. Yep. But it's so hard yeah. to watch as a parent. But it's, you know it, you have to do it. It's the same in your own life. You have the to fail. other The other uh, point that I would make there is um, when, you, when you get to the point where you've perfected something, let's just say you're at the point in your sales pitch where you feel like I've got this down. I've got every objection figured out. There's nothing that I haven't seen yet. I've built all the myelin necessary <laughs> to overcome any conversation that we have. You have to, in order to get better, in order to continue generating myelin, you have to stretch yourself to the next level. You now have to find the next thing that you don't know how to do, push yourself to get there because you will not generate more. And as a matter of fact, it actually starts to degenerate, which is yep. why, you know, people that are old like me, you know, we start to forget things. Yeah, middle-aged. You actually <laughs> stop generating more myelin at the age of 50. So you don't necessarily, doesn't start Ooh. degenerating necessarily, but um, it's sort of the peak you of your generation. You stop generating myelin. Yeah, you generate at a significant, again, I'm not, I'm not a scientist, but from what I read in the book, you generate at a significantly slower rate, you know, once you hit that age of 50. But Dude. it's also why uh, older people are so wise because they've got all this myelin <laughs> wrapped around the wires in their brain. Every they time know you everything. say myelin, I think like Merlin. Merlin. <laughs> the other thing that I would point out for, from a deep practice standpoint, this was uh, uh, demonstrated heavily in the book, is chunk up what you're doing uh, or what you're practicing into smaller units. So this is the idea of rather than trying to go out and do it all and get great at everything, golf's a great example of this. Like if you go out and try and figure out a golf swing in one lesson, you will fail miserably. Yeah. You've got to figure out your backswing first. You've got to figure out your stance separately. Then you've got to figure out your your uh, your actual swing. Then you got to figure out your front. Like you have to break all of these things down. Some of the examples I gave in the book was this uh, girl who played the clarinet and they said she literally put six months worth of practice into six minutes of playing the clarinet because what she would do is she would start off trying to play a new piece of music. She would mess up. She would stop. She would look at the notes. Then she would sing the, the notes to herself. Then she would sing and finger along the clarinet with the notes. Then she would play the notes. She'd get a few more notes in, mess up, go back and do it all again. Another really cool example uh, was this idea of Brazilian soccer players and how, you know, Brazilian soccer players, football players, you know, best in the world, right? The reason why they got there, so they just assume like Brazilian is this talent hotbed. It's, it's, sure. it's they're, all, they're all born to be great at soccer. What they actually found out when visiting it was every Brazilian soccer player starts off playing a game called futsal, which is a very small indoor soccer field played with a small ball. Hmm. So like you have at all times, you're inches away from other people, maybe a foot as opposed to like 50 yards. And you have to learn people. to control. So unlike people who grow up playing soccer on a big field where if they get in trouble, they punt the ball away. They actually have to learn how to use their feet to methodically keep the uh, foot control and keep the ball close that's and away crazy. from the other player. So yep. that's the other, and I bring these up as examples because like how can you then apply that to your business where you can break what you're trying to do down into smaller chunks like that? Yeah, well, sales is a perfect example of that. You can break it down for if you got your intro, you got your actual value prop, you've got your overcoming of objections, the way you deliver pricing, like it's such an easy way to break down all these different pieces of the sale. You got your first call, you got your second call, like everything can be broken down to yep. practice. Yep. The second piece of this uh, is the ignition. So the ignition is an external cue that triggers uh, our desire to become skilled at something and convinces us that it's possible to achieve if we work hard for it. So there's 
this is something that you can't create ignition, right? Ignition yeah. has to happen. So we're kind of thinking about if you want to become great at sales or you want to get, um, you want to become no, no, the best real estate investor, or you want to do X in your business or in your life for personal growth or wealth. It's not like you can just go, I want to do that. And then you naturally become motivated to do it because ignition has to provide long-term motivation. So it has to be something. It reminds me about. of your prey drive. Yes. Uh, Coach Burt. Yeah, um, if you go and listen to Coach Michael Burt, he talks about prey drive and finding the things that ignite your prey drive, ignite your ignition that will get you into deep practice. Yeah. So one of the things that ignites my ignition uh, for me is what I would call providing freedom for my family, my sphere. So I, I constantly think about those things like if I am struggling to get the motivation to work, and get the motivation like everybody does to to show up every day with my 100%. I just try to sit there and meditate on some of those, you know, action buttons for me. So one of them is freedom of my family. Another um, one would be competition uh, fuels me. There's nothing like competition that puts a little chip on my shoulder or people um, quitting on me. Does your your competitive drive come from... um, does it come from the ability to want to win or does it come more from like the idea of, hey, if they can do it, I can do it too and I can do it better? Um, I would say not wanting to lose. Okay. So I would rather not lose than win. I don't know <laughs> if that sounds weird or not, but I don't know. It'd be interesting to know if people are more, like winning is nice, but not yeah. losing is better. Not losing is better. <laughs> but then also um, the idea <laughs> of, you know, what can I achieve? Like the real, real motivation is like, can I do that? Mm. Like, can I achieve that? Can I actually accomplish? Like, I think I shared with you down in Miami, like, can I be a guy that builds a billion dollar valued organization and empire? So few people can, can I have, can I do that? Can I achieve that? Is that within me? And it's not even about the money. It's just more about like, wow, yeah, can I, Tom Brady, can I play football till I'm 50 and win, you know, seven Super Bowls, eight (laughs) Super Bowls, like type idea. It's like, I don't know. It's just not even about the Super Bowls probably anymore. It's just like the, can I do that? Well, the reason why I ask is some of the examples that they gave in the book that were these like ignition points for these different talent hotbeds that would pop up is like the one we all know is the four minute mile, right? Mm. When I can't remember, do you remember the name? I don't remember the the name of the guy. uh, Who broke the four minute mile. No one had ran a four minute mile. Bannister? Bannister, yeah. Yeah, uh, Roger Bannister. Bannister. Yeah. No one had run a four minute mile up to that point until he did. And And then after that, Hundreds of high school runners are now running sub four minute miles consistently because there's this ignition point of if they can do it, now it's possible. And now all of my action and my practice goes into doing the same thing. Female South Korean golfers was another example. If you look at the LPAJ tour, there are so many great female South Korean golfers. There were no South Korean golfer that had succeeded in golf until 21 year old uh, Sayri Pak won the LP of the U.S. Open in um, 1998. Hmm. Now, 45 South Korean players have won a third of the major events since then. That's crazy. That's because why they you're... saw her on TV and I watched an interview with them and they all remembered like every moment. One of the moments was like, we remembered when she took off her socks to hit that ball out of the water. Jeez. And they looked at and said, if, if she can do that, I can do. Yeah, geez, that's crazy. Yeah. Well, you know, like if you ever compete, you want to go second. Yeah. Like American Ninja Warrior, you want to go second, baby. I don't know if anybody watches that show, but you want to go second. Love that show. <laughs> There's a couple things you can do to help kind of facilitate the ignition opportunities. You know, you can create these moments where ignition can happen. Uh, create encounters, right? Hang out with people that you want to be. Like we yeah. talk about the you you are the five people that you hang yep. around, right? Correct. Join networking groups. Put yourself in positions where you will see people. You want to know if you can run a billion dollar company. Go make sure that you're hanging out with people that have successfully built a billion dollar company so that you can then see if they can do it, I can do it too. Yeah, stay broke. It's amazing like uh, how comfort kills progress. Mm -hmm. Grant Cardone says this all the time. You got to stay broke. And And I kind of agree with it. Like when you are broke and desperate, and I'm using broke as a metaphor and example of going like when you need something, (laughs) when you're in a state of need, oh, you act. When you're in a state of comfort and lack of need, yeah, you don't act. So you got to put yourself in a state of need. That will ignite you like no other. When you know, if I don't do this, 
I'm not going to eat. Yeah. Man, there's nothing like motivating and igniting you like that. So those are the first two. So these three things, again, these are things that build myelin, which ultimately helps us get better at things. Deep practice, ignition. The third one, we're not going to take a ton of time to talk about because we could have an entire episode on this. But the third one that they found uh, consistent amongst all of the greats uh, is coaching. Right. So finding someone that you can uh, learn from, find, it doesn't have to be a coach you pay for. This could also be a mentor, but somebody that can push you and help you uh, uh, facilitate things like that deep practice, like those ignition points. So finding a coach or a mentor. Yeah, I would tell you, like, it's what you said. Every great person has had a coach. Mm-hmm. Every I, I don't think there's probably someone who's accomplished anything without having a mentor or a coach. And you just the real key there is being open and committing to what that person is coaching you. I think being the right type of person where you actually listen to the coach is really the pain point for most people. It's like, you actually have to show up. You actually have to listen. You actually have to humble yourself. Most people, when they hear coaching and stuff like that, they hear it, but they don't apply it. You got to apply it. Find the right coach, right? So like, it would be worse to stick with a coach that you're not taking their advice rather than firing that coach, letting that mentor go and going yep. and find a mentor who does drive you. Yep. All right. Thank you so much for listening. I know we got a little head, head, heady. Yeah. A little myelin. A, he- a little myelin. <laughs> We're coming out of the ear canal, out of the brain, <laughs> back to this playground here at the Magic School of <laughs> State Paid Science Aid. Thank you so much for listening. Head on over to statepaidpodcast.com for the show notes uh, and the video of this episode. Again, the book, if you're interested, is The Talent Code by Dan Coyle. If you're interested in supporting the show, there's two ways we ask you to do it. First way is to head on over to Apple Podcasts, drop us a five-star review and a comment so we can read it here on the show. And the best way to help out the show and show your support is to share this episode with somebody and share it on your social media. Luke. Yes. Why don't ants get ill? Why don't ants get ill? Sick, they have you know? the antidote. Close. Oh. They have uh, antibodies. Uh, that was so close. Oh, that was I'm close. That All was right. <laughs> if you want to get a hold of me or Luke, you can email us at podcast at remindermedia.com. And of course, you can find us on Instagram. We are at Stay Paid Podcast. For this episode of Stay Paid, I'm Joshua Stike. Hey guys, I'm Luke Acree. Here's what I would challenge you to do. Find the ignition for yourself. What is that igniting thing that gets you moving, that gets you into deep practice? Sit down, think about what is it that ignites you, that that fires your prey drive, as Michael Burt would say, so you can get into deep practice. Remember, we all have the emotional roller coaster where some days we feel it, some days we don't. The key is being able to step back, knowing what ignites you, reflect, focus, meditate on that to get yourself focused and then get back into the game. Remember the difference between top producers and mediocre producers. It's top producers take action. Take action on that today. 